I've just got these lovely Karataki Ganzai Tambe watercolors, which I've wanted for ages. They're a Japanese style watercolor, which is very different from our kind of Western watercolors, how they work. The box it comes in is really beautiful too. I can't wait to start swatching to test out the colors. And I'm using a lot of different sorts of papers. You can swatch the paper right inside the lid, but chances are it's going to look very different on different papers. And I'm including rice paper in my test. These large pans lift out and this is because you can use very large sumi e style Japanese brushes in them. I'm just using small brushes to test out swatches today, but you can see the thick consistency of this compared to ordinary watercolour. It's got different kind of binders in it to watercolour. Another fun fact about it is that it uses stuff called gafoon, which is ground up shells of shells like oyster shells for the whites in it, which is a very traditional Japanese uh, thing to do as well. And this is a very tonal palette. It's called the Art Nouveau palette because it's based on Art Nouveau colors for its inspiration. So maybe don't expect to be able to mix any colour under the sun with this set. But some of the muted colours made me really happy and they'd be pretty decent ready-made skin colours. The alizarin crimson really shows why it's a good idea to swatch things because it doesn't look alizarin crimson at all until it dries and then it starts behaving a little bit more like alizarin. Something interesting with these watercolours is that although they can be a little bit tricky to blend without them going into a cauliflower appearance, they are very easy to reanimate and kind of fix afterwards if that happens. The alizarin turned out okay. So I have all my swatching done now on different papers and you can see it looks much different on rice paper than the other papers, much softer. And I have even filled in um, a comparison with ordinary watercolours on rice paper. It is not a huge difference. I did my first experiments though on watercolour paper. And I think I overmixed too many colours in the head. I've heard people say that ideally you should be only mixing two or three colours with these paints or layering your paint. So that's going to be my approach to painting this hydrangea that has all these nice colours in it. I get to try out my Venetian red and my alizarin crimson on the edge of the petal as well. This Mars yellow is perfect for autumn leaves.
Next, I want to see how my India ink brush pen gets along with the colours. Pretty well, it seems. I really love the selection of greens in this. And I love the ability to be able to work back into something you've done because I'm not a natural watercolour painter. I think with these watercolours though, probably a light touch is required for getting the best results. I'm mixing up some Sumi E ink to paint on rice paper now. I was using very absorbent rice paper, which is hard to control, but you can use thicker paper or something else like mulberry paper for different effects or easier to handle paint that doesn't bleed as much. I did enjoy my experiments though, and I, I really like this Art Nouveau set from Kuritaki. Very nice colours. <laughs> 